from People Making News this morning. John Gotti, who's said to be the most powerful organized crime boss in the country, is in a New York City jail this morning. Gotti was refused bail after he was arrested on charges of trying to have a construction union leader killed. And Jessica Hahn has reported... In New York City this morning, the man police call the country's most powerful crime boss faces the possibility of life in prison for allegedly ordering the shooting of a union official. Barbara Nevins of WCBS-TV reports. John Gotti looked pale after a night in a Rikers Island cell. Smartly dressed in a sport coat and turtleneck, he didn't hesitate to respond to charges of assault and conspiracy. John Gotti, how many police in charge? Police arrested Gotti in Little Italy as he left the Ravenite Social Club. Hundreds of hours of secret recordings made in Gotti's Ozone Park headquarters reveal investigators say that he and two others ordered the 1986 shooting of Carpenters Union business agent John O'Connor. Gotti on the tapes was overheard to say O'Connor must be bust or busted up. Ronald Goldstock, chief of the state organized crime task force, had the club bugged. John Gotti allegedly indictment to be the boss of the Gambino family, is now under indictment, ironically, for an act, it's alleged, that was designed to consolidate his power as the head of a family racked by assassination and dissension. The reason for the shooting was straightforward. O'Connor allegedly ordered his boys to smash up the construction site of what is now Bankers and Brokers Restaurant in Battery Park City. The restaurant, owned by a reputed Gambino associate, wasn't using union labor. The vandalism was retribution. But John Gotti, as the new boss of the Gambino crime family, had to have the last say, according to prosecutors. And members of the Westies crime gang were allegedly hired as the shooters. O'Connor is under indictment for ordering the damage. Prosecutors are aware of Gotti's celebrity, his folk hero status. His financial resources are literally that of the family, which is an extensive criminal organization throughout the United States and throughout the world. As prosecutors asked for Gotti to be held without bail, Gotti stood silently. His attorney said Gotti won't run. He's not going anyplace. He's been in New York his whole life. He's never ran away from a problem ever. Gotti was released on $100,000 bail. I'm Barbara Nevins for CBS News, New York. You know, uh, everybody here, the chief of detectives, uh, Robert Colangelo, the police commissioner, Ron Goldstock, the head of the organized crime task force, and James Fox, the assistant director in charge of the New York office of the FBI. But this is a, a case which was made because of the joint efforts of the New York City Police Department, the FBI, the Organized Crime Task Force. Everybody played an essential role, and in this case it would not have been brought to indictment without everybody's joint and cooperative effort. And last night, uh, John Gotti, Angelo Ruggiero, and Anthony Tony Lee Guerreri were arrested on an indictment charging them with 
assault and conspiracy in connection with the May 7, 1986 shooting of John O'Connor, business agent of Local 608 of the Carpenters Union in Manhattan. According to the indictment of three men, Gotti, allegedly boss of the Gambino organized crime family, Ruggiero, a captain in that family, and Guerrero, a soldier, conspired with other persons to punish O'Connor for wrecking the construction site of the Brokers and Bankers restaurant at Battery Park City. O'Connor was shot four times but survived. He is currently under indictment in New York County for causing the damage of the restaurant. Kevin Kelly, in identifying the indictment as one of the other conspirators, is charged in a separate New York County indictment. Gotti, 48, of 160, 11, 85th Street, Howard Beach, Queens, was arrested by New York City Police Department detectives, FBI agents, and investigators of the Organized Crime Task Force. Last night at 5.40 at Broadway near Prince Street, Guerrero, 60, was arrested at 137-23 Lafayette Avenue, Ozone Park, Queens, about 6 o'clock. And the other defendant was taken into custody in a hospital where he's a patient. It's Angelo Ruggiero. Uh, Gotti and Guerrero are to be arraigned today before Acting Justice George Robertson, Part 30 of the New York State Supreme Court. Ruggiero will be arraigned as soon as possible. The step before this investigation was the result of, of joint and cooperative efforts by the detectives of the New York City Police Department. Uh, by the FBI and by investigators of the Organized Crime Task Force. And it is also the joint investigation of the Governor's Construction Industry Task Force, which is staffed by the Organized Crime Task Force and by the New York County District Attorney's Office. The, uh, the maximum sentence for uh, assault in the first degree is uh, five to 15 years. And, in state prison. I also want to thank the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Rudolph Giuliani, and the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Andrew J. Maloney, and Edward A. McDonald, attorney in charge of the Department of Justice's organized task force for the Eastern District for their cooperations and assistance. The case was presented to the grand jury and will be prosecuted by Assistant District Attorney Michael Cherkasky, Chief of the Investigation Division Task Force, Attorney Barbara DeTata, and Assistant District Attorney Jeffrey Schlanger the Rackets Bureau of our office. Ben, do you want to? Okay. I, I think my voice will carry. Uh, I think uh, uh, Bob Morgenthau has, has said it all, that uh, the reason we have been so successful here in New York uh, is that we've worked together, uh, federal, state, and city, uh, in attacking organized crime, and now we have a statue that's been on the books a little while and just beginning to show proof, and that's our Organized Crime Con Control Act. And uh, uh, this week, we were successful in getting, uh, Bob Morgan, I was successful in, in getting his first convictions on that, uh, under that statue, uh, Ernest uh, Grillo, Jr., and uh, Michael Scarola, uh, both of whom are, uh, are going to be going away for hard time and long time in New York uh, uh, state prison. Scarola will do 11 to 33, which means he will do a minimum 11 years, and uh, uh, Ernest Grillo was a 6 to 18, which means a minimum that's six years. And in the state system, you do that minimum and don't get out earlier. On the current case, it's, uh, we've been a long time on working on this case together with Ron Goldstock, with the FBI, uh, and with the, uh, the governor's uh, special uh, uh, task force working on construction racketeering, and Chief Coangelo uh, working with Ronnie Goldstock. Uh, and the district attorney in trying to pull this together. And I think this indictment that Bob Morgenthau has announced today is a very significant uh, step forward in that. Uh, and we're going to keep pressing forward in a joint effort uh, to get these people under control and keep them under control. Thank you. The uh, mob in this country has fallen on hard times. That's in part because of radical changes in its membership, it's in part because of the influence of narcotics, but in large measure because the traditional ways in which their bosses have been protected by layers of insulation have been affected by more sophisticated and cooperative law enforcement efforts. This case, as Ben and Bob have mentioned, 
is such an example. The electronic surveillance of the Organized Crime Task Force, investigation by the governor, construction industry strike force, information from the Manhattan DA's office, work of the FBI, the New York Police Department, and the state police, and the cross-designation of task force attorneys like Barbara Tatata uh, to work with Bob Morgenthau's assistance. The mob cannot continue to operate it effectively without its leaders. John Gotti, alleged in the indictment to be the boss of the Gambino family, is now under indictment, ironically, for an act that's alleged that was designed to consolidate his power as the head of a family racked by assassination and dissension. The indictment, in addition, demonstrates the corrupt relationship that exists between organized crime families, in this case the Gambino family and the Westies, and between those groups and one of the most important industries to the citizenry of New York, the construction industry. This then is in another in a long line of actions taken by state, local, and federal officials which will inevitably change the face of organized crime and of the social institutions which it corruptly influences. Mr. Fox, yeah. This is just another successful example of what a team effort can accomplish, and these cooperative ventures will continue. The FBI and every agency represented here has had and continues to have ongoing investigations on every boss of every New York family. If they think that they can continue to do business today in New York as they did 30 years ago, they've got a real surprise coming. They're going to end up in prison. My congratulations to Mr. Morgenthau and all the members of this team. I, I neglected to, uh, to also state that uh, we had the assistance of the Special Investigation Unit of the New York State Police and Lieutenant Hughes is here today. Mr. Goldstock, what role did secretly recorded tapes play in this event? Well, I mean, I can't go into the evidence in this case, um, but obviously electronic surveillance is one of the major ways in which law enforcement can determine the conversations that are going on between the conspirators and provides information that otherwise wouldn't exist as to the top levels of the people within organized crime groups. So are you saying that you have recorded tapes, secretly recorded tapes? Well, I think it's a matter of public record that there was electronic surveillance on John Gotti. Um, and that that evidence, in fact, has been uh, used in other uh, trials the word before is this. The only, is the only electronic evidence that you have, Mr. Gotti, allegedly saying that an unnamed union leader must be busted up. I can't comment on that. Another question. If Mr. Gotti is the alleged godfather, how come he's only being nailed for these types of charges? Assault well, assault, assault in the first degree is a, is a serious charge. And... Yeah, well, I mean, this, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, so in the first degree is a, is a is a is a very serious charge, and and uh, uh, as Mr. Goldstock said earlier, I mean, often the heads of families are stay in the shadows, so that when you when you have evidence uh, that the head of the most powerful crime family in the United States, with a thousand members and associates, uh, ordered. An assault in the first degree, obviously, you're going to go forward and, and prosecute that charge. Well, I'm talking about a thousand associates. There could be more than a thousand crimes. This is, so, this is one this indictment. Is, this is not this a, is a single indictment. Yeah. Mr. Fox, bringing the state charges first, what does this say about the timidity and the foot dragging in the federal racketeering case? Well, that mm. federal racketeering case was not an FBI case, of course, <clears throat> so I won't comment on it. But this, this, the federal investigation has been a failure. You haven't produced any charges. After it's years. ongoing. This is the first indictment that's returned. He may go to jail on this indictment. There may be others coming that he will go to jail on. I, mean, I don't think anybody can accuse the federal government of, of foot dragging. The FBI has certainly made a lot of important racketeering cases. Well, Mr. Morgan, the, the last time we saw John Gotti was in the federal court, and that case in the Eastern District did not go, as far as prosecutors were concerned, very well. He got off. It's widely believed that the feds have been trying to nail him on the Castellano <coughs> slaying for two years now. Is this, is this an indication that it's being done at the state level, a way of admitting that you just don't got the goods on him for the Castellano case? No, I don't think it, I think it means just one thing, and that, and that is that in this case, we have the evidence, with the help of, of a lot of different investigators, to make this case and solve in the first degree. Mr. Morgan, well, obviously, other cases, um, you know, may come at a later date or may not come. But, but I think you've had this evidence for two or three years. Why did you wait so long to bring this indictment? Because when we had all the evidence that we needed, 
We presented the case. You had the Westies testimony two years ago, the wiretaps three years ago. What took so long? I, I, I think what I'm telling you is that when we had all the evidence that we needed, we then proceeded very quickly into the grand jury. Does the change of racketeering, the, the change uh, the racketeering law enable you to bring this case now? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm not. I'm saying that when we finally had all the evidence, we proceeded very fast. Does that mean you have a new witness to testify? I, I don't tend to dis discuss the, uh, the evidence, but I, I can tell you that as soon as we felt we had all the necessary evidence, we went right ahead with you the case. Mr. Morgan, a question about the arrest. Uh, Mr. Gotti's lawyer, Bruce Cutler, uh, told me this morning he was quite upset at the way in which Mr. Gotti was arrested. He said that you really have been surveilling him for 10 years, and you could have called up Bruce Cutler, and they would have come in this morning. Why that way with 50 or so agents going well, in? Well, I think that's an exaggeration. But I think you're also aware of, a, of the shooting of, of a police officers in, 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 in Queens where there was a mistake as to what the in, as to who they were so I think that uh, that the uh, Mission Ward can answer this but I but I think they wanted to be sure that there was no question that this was a, a police operation and not an operation by other gang members well, that's well, 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 let, let me answer it. Let, let, let me comment on it uh, uh, we arrest people for, for, for assault one and conspiracy on the street I don't know anything about John Gotti that says we have to call him up at home and invite him down uh, to some place of his convenience. We arrested him uh, where we thought he would be and where we could locate him, and that's the reason we arrested him. And Mr. Bruce Cutler uh, should know that's what we're going to do in the future. Uh, well, Mr. Morgenthau, let me ask you this. Uh, you, there is this perception, rightly or wrongly, that Mr. Gowdy seems conviction. There's a certain cynicism in the public about this guy. He's been in the public eye for so long. We keep hearing uh, all the crimes that he's committed, all the things he's done, but he just seems to keep getting away. Did, was there any trepidation about bringing this? I mean, are you, are you sure this time, I guess, is the question? Let me, let me say this, that <laughs> as soon as we had what we thought was legally admissible evidence which could result in an indictment, we presented it to a grand jury, and the grand jury's returned the indictment. Are you going to use Mickey Featherstone in this case to testify against him? I'm sorry. Mickey Featherstone. Are you going to use Mickey Featherstone in this case? Well, you, you know that we're not going to discuss who the witnesses are going to be. Let's well, so go back to the arrest. This indictment was returned yesterday. Absolutely not. Was there a conscious decision to wait till after the court's closed for the day to arrest him? I'm, I'm not going to discuss the timing of it. It was a conscious decision to arrest him where we knew uh, he would be most likely to be found, and that's where he was arrested. That's, that's, at the, that's at that club where he spends a good part of his time, and he spends his time at that time of the day. Mr. Morgenthau, could you just... Uh, Mr. Actually, we had a, you know, we had a, I mean, it's not a secret, we had a surveillance on that club, and as soon as he... What did they want to do with this uh, carpet, as you know, Chief? Mr. Gotti and his associates, Angelo Ruggiero and, and Guerreri, are charged with conspiring to punish O'Connor for wrecking the construction site of the Brokers and Bankers restaurant at Battery Park City. And they also are charged with the actual assault. <coughs> and the purpose of that, I say, was to, to punish O'Connor and to send a message to other people that you don't interfere with an operation of John Gotti. Well, if Gotti is the boss, then he must have ordered the hit. That's what the indictment charges. Say again? That's what the indictment charges. That Gotti ordered the hit. That's right. That's what the indictment charges. <coughs> Mr. Morgan, uh, Mr. Gotti wasn't arrested, I think. He was arrested at Princeton Broadway. That's right. Several blocks from the club. One block. Because he walked away from the club. <coughs> Will there be more indictments on other figures in the near future, other crime laws? This is just one doing? part of a, a trend. I mean, all you look all across the country, mob bosses in <coughs> every family in every city, especially in New York, have been uh, indicted and in most cases convicted over the last five years, and I think that's going to continue. I think it's going to continue not only with the traditional mob, but it will continue as well with emerging, ignored, non-traditional crime groups as well. Mr. Giuliani called for uh, new laws to confiscate the assets of, of crime channels I think it's very clear that arresting individuals was just a, a war of attrition that did not work. The RICO statute and now the state OCO statute will allow us to deal not only with individuals but with groups of people's entire hierarchies of organizations. In fact, the commission case showed the heads of five families, but additional remedies are needed as well. 
One of them is forfeiture. Indeed, we are concerned enough about the forfeiture statute in New York that the Law Enforcement Council is going to have hearings on it to see if we can improve it and strengthen it and can make it more effective so that we can actually hurt not only the families but the enterprises in which they, yeah. they, they have an interest. Yeah, I, might, I might say that, that yesterday two, two members of the Gambino family <clears throat> pled guilty to, a, to an OCA charge, an organized crime charge. It's the first conviction in the, in the state of New York. And that in that case, more than $2 million of assets were seized and are subject to forfeiture. Mr. Morgan, Mr. Morgan, you said that the maximum was 5 to 15 That's assault right. charges. Uh, what's the minimum? How, realistically, how soon, if convicted, do you get out? Five is the minimum. Five it's a five to minimum. In New York State, you serve the minimum. You must serve the minimum. Commissioner, were you concerned at all about arresting Mr. Gotti as he stepped outside the raid tonight rather than follow him? Were you concerned there might be some shooting or no, be dangerous uh, to your office? No, a block from where they close was. Oh. And there was no fear that anything was going to happen to us, but we're not looking to take any un unnecessary risk either. Does anyone have a date of the October 87 indictment of Mr. Yeah, we can give it to you, though. Uh, Mr. Fox, you said there are other indictments he may be, there may be other indictments which he'll be going to jail on. Can you tell us what the status is of that racketeering investigation in Brooklyn? Can we expect anything to come out of it soon, the spring, the summer? Uh, I wouldn't give a, a target date, but again, in general, the boss of every New York organized crime family, family is under continuing investigation by the FBI and other uh, agencies in the city here. And though we're going to share information among the agencies, and, th and those are going to lead to other indictments if they, if the bosses continue to try and do business that they have traditionally. Well, Ron, and you know, there's, there's, no there's market there's, date on the Brooklyn grand jury. Not, that, anything that not that we're willing to mention, Ron. Jim, if if I can pick up on what Jim just said. Um, the, the heads of the family and the people within the families are aware of that as well. I mean, it is very clear that people within the families know that if they become the boss or take positions in the hierarchy, they are going to become targeted by law enforcement and they are going to be caught. And that is dramatically affecting the way the families operate, the structure of the families, and the effectiveness of those families in the future.